We are now going to focus on the sympathetics or the sympathetic portion of the autonomic nervous system. And our objectives are to, one, describe the functions of sympathetic innervation, two, the abdominal pelvic organs. Second, identify the origin of preganglionic and postganglionic sympathetic pathways, describe the neurotransmitters used in these two synapses, and describe how the adrenal gland and skin are exceptions in sympathetic pathways. And so this picture is what we're going to build towards. This is going to be the end result of understanding sympathetic pathways. But I, I decided to cover this one uh, uh, by starting with the end in mind. What is our end result that we want to have happen? That is sympathetic innervation of abdominal pelvic organs. So here's our GI tract. So when sympathetics innervate the liver, it's going to cause the liver to release glucose into the blood. It's going to relax the gallbladder. And then for the stomach, the duodenum, the jejunum, ileum, and the colon, it's going to decrease peristalsis, but it's also going to increase blood flow to that area. Now with the penis, it's going to cause ejaculation. So and I'm not going to cover every single organ, but here's some of the samples that I'm going to use throughout this tutorial. But Dr. Morton, where do sympathetics come from? <laughs> Through innervated abdominal pelvic organs. Where sympathetics come from? <laughs> should say where do, but um, I'm not going to go back and fix it now. All right, so um, they come from the preaortic ganglia, or that plexus, that we call that prevertebral plexus. And so the letter A represents the abdominal aorta, and those yellow circles and those lines between are the preaortic ganglia. So like the celiac ganglion by the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric ganglia by the superior mesenteric artery, aortical renal ganglia, inferior mesenteric ganglia, that's the superior hypogastric ganglion and plexus right where the aorta bifurcates, hypergastric nerve, and the inferior hypogastric plexus. That's where they arise. And so when we see the GI tract and there's the penis, the ganglion, that celiac ganglion, is a ganglion. It's a collection of cell bodies. Those cell bodies are postganglionic sympathetic neurons that arise in the celiac ganglia, and then they course wherever the arteries go. So the axons, like Christmas lights on a Christmas tree branch, just course out with the arteries, and they go, and then they'll innervate that gallbladder, okay, or, and cause it to relax. Then the same thing goes to cause decrease in peristalsis in the small intestine and change the blood vessel uh, diameter, okay, or going to, for the inferior mesenteric ganglion, to the colon. And then also from the inferior hypogastric plexus to the penis to cause it to ejaculate. That's where they originate. So basically, when those neural crest cells migrate out to that preaortic region, the axons continue out and follow out to those terminal organs. So, a pattern. So, because some of you are wondering, do I have to memorize where they all go? If you know this pattern, it's sufficient. The more proximal the GI tract, like distal esophagus and the abdomen, the stomach, duodenum, and then elements of the foregut like the liver and pancreas. The more proximal GI tract, the higher up in this pre-aortic ganglion the uh, innervation will come from. And the more distal the GI tract, or if you're in the pelvis and perineum, the more inferior you are um, in the pre-aortic ganglion and plexus that the nerves would come out. If you know that pattern, you're good. All right, let's take this picture and replace it with this picture. So there I just want to show so you can see the celiac ganglion, supramesenteric, irritical renal, inferior mesenteric ganglia. And then we're going to take this portion of the picture and replace it here in this picture. So there is our celiac ganglion. So now if we have the uh, celiac ganglion show, look at that the way... I'm going to do that one more time. So this is like ganglion. Now watch the axon as it courses along the artery and goes to the gallbladder or and then cause it to relax or out to the stomach and causes vasoconstriction and decrease of peristalsis or the superior mesenteric ganglion, which is right there. And you follow those pathways out to the small intestines that decrease peristalsis. But notice that those nerves just follow the arteries. Okay. Next question. Dr. Morton, where do the sympathetics come from to innervate the preaortic ganglia? Well, good question. And that's going to come from our central nervous system. And remember that all sympathetics, oh, and then this one, there's C1, there's C, I just wanted to orient you there, C1, C8, T1, down to T12, there's L1, L2, L3, L5, S1, S5, and coccygeal 1. It's a cute little guy. So when we see... The question you might ask is, why is this separated? And the main reason is just what we talked about before. All sympathetics originate between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. 
So I'm going to gray out those other ones. And so here, let's now take a look at this, how we get to the preaortic ganglion plexus. Well, there's a cell body in the lateral horn of the T5 level of the spinal cord. Uh, preganglionic sympathetic neuron comes out that ventral root into the ventral ramus, and then it's going to go into that white ramus and out a splanchnic nerve and go to that preaortic ganglion. And let's do the same thing on the T6, T7, T8, and then the T9 level. All those splanchnics between T5 and T9 that come out, that sympathetic chain, are called the greater splanchnic nerve between T5 and T9, and they synapse in that uh, preaortic ganglion. And so now what happens is we see that ciliac ganglion, we now take and put a cell body there, and then that postganglion follows the arteries out and it causes the gallbladder to relax, or the liver to secrete glucose, or the stomach to relax, the duodenum to relax, and so forth. All right, how about the next one, the next level? So there's a cell body in the lateral horn of the T10 spinal cord level. And it comes out and goes to ventral root, ventral ramus, white ramus communicons, and then out that sympathetic chain via splanchnic nerve and goes to, in this case, say, the superior mesenteric ganglion. And then there's another one that come together. So the T10, T11 splanchnics are called the lesser splanchnic. And then you're going to have, a in the superior mesenteric ganglion, there's a, uh, the postganglionic sympathetic neuron follows the arteries out, and then it's going to go and it's going to cause the jejunum or the colon or the ileum to decrease in peristalsis. Now, what about uh, the organs in the pelvis? So, any sympathetics that go to your eye, to your, to the penis, or to the toe, to a sweat gland, always arise between T1 and L2. And so if we're thinking again, remember down in the abdominal pelvic region, we see this preganglionic sympathetic or, uh, neuron arise from the lateral horn of the uh, gray matter of the L2 spinal cord level. It comes out and goes into that prevertebral plexus, descends down to the inferior hypogastric plexus. We call that a lumbar splanchnic because it's coming off a lumbar nerve. It synapses in that inferior hypogastric plexus, goes out to the penis and causes the penis to ejaculate. The key to this is always getting from that CNS origin, T1 to L2, for abdominal pelvic organs, I should say, arise between the T5 and L2, principally, goes to the preaortic ganglia, and then follows blood vessels out to a target organ. Now, there's visceral sensory pathways that trace backwards in every single one of the pathways we just talked about. So here we have this picture. We're going to talk about visceral sensory. And what I'm going to do is to just make it s more simple is I'm going to focus then on the greater and lesser splanchnic in only one level. But this happens at every level. As you see that greater splanchnic going from T5 to the celiac ganglion and from the celiac ganglion to the gallbladder, in the opposite order, there is a visceral sensory neuron that's coming back the opposite way. But notice that it goes in through the dorsal root, and that pink circle represents the dorsal root ganglion. And that's where all sensory information, such as stretching of the wall of the organ, is going to go back to that level of the spinal cord. And then the same thing, we take a look at this one. It comes backwards in the lesser splanchnic. Every motor pathway, every sympathetic pathway has a visceral sensory pathway. It comes back. The only difference is that visceral sensory pathway will go in through the dorsal root and then synapse in the dorsal horn gray matter. This is going to become significant when we talk about referred and visceral pain. Okay, uh, then sympathetic nervous system and our neurotransmitters. So our neurotransmitters, let's go back to this little, uh, our two neuron chain, preganglionic and then the postganglionic. And so what we're going to do is we take a magnifying glass and focus on that synapse between the preganglionic and postganglionic neuron. And there we have it, and we're going to blow it up, okay? So there's our preganglionic terminal axon for sympathetics. And there we have the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, ACH. And then there's a synaptic cleft, and there's our postganglionic cell body. And on that postganglionic cell body is a receptor specific for acetylcholine so that when, this, th when the conduction of that impulse reaches that terminal axon of this preganglionic sympathetic neuron, acetylcholine is released, and it binds to the postganglionic cell body at a cholinergic receptor, cholinergic for acetylcholine receptor. 
Now, we take a look and put a magnifying glass where the postganglionic sympathetic neuron synapses at the target organ. So here we have a postganglionic terminal axon, and there we have a different neurotransmitter. Here we have epinephrine, in some case norepinephrine, but I'll just for simplicity say epinephrine. And there we have the synaptic cleft, and there's our, some target organ. So what happens is then when the conduction reaches that um, terminal axon of this uh, postganglionic sympathetic neuron, epinephrine is released through the synaptic cleft, and it binds to um, an adrenergic receptor. Uh, you think of adrenergic because epinephrine and adrenaline uh, are synonymous for the most part. And so think of it in an adrenaline receptor or an adrenergic receptor. So in review of the sympathetic nervous system, number one, sympathetics originate in the CNS between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. Number two, sympathetics course to pre-aortic ganglia via splanchnic nerves, like greater splanchnic, lesser splanchnic, least splanchnic, lumbar splanchnics, and so forth. Three, sympathetics course to end organs by following arteries, just like Christmas lights around a Christmas tree branch. And number four, sympathetics, and I just put the postganglionic synapse here, synapse via epinephrine to adrenergic receptors. And I, get, I say this again, this is the postganglionic terminal axon, because that's primarily where drugs are going to act. So, here we have that picture in review of everything we just covered. Now, the last objective is some interesting sympathetic exceptions, adrenal gland and sweat gland. So adrenal gland, the exception is it does not have a postganglionic neuron. It's pretty cool. Most of its preganglionic origin comes from the T12 level, but it could be L1 or L2. And it comes out and goes to what's called the, lesser, the least splanchnic nerve. And it goes through the preaortic ganglia but doesn't synapse. It goes right through usually the aortical renal ganglia and follows the renal arteries out and synapse directly in the adrenal medulla. And there, the adrenal medulla has epinephrine and norepinephrine that once innervated by that least splanchnic nerve, what happens then is norepinephrine, epinephrine go into the bloodstream. So what happens is the neural crest cells migrate directly to become the adrenal medulla, not the cortex, that's different, but just the adrenal medulla. And so what happens is the adrenal medulla is the postganglionic neuron, except instead of having an axon, it just secretes the neurotransmitters, epinephrine and norepinephrine, into the bloodstream. It's kind of cool. Second exception are sweat glands. They use acetylcholine as its postganglionic neurotransmitter, not norepinephrine. So it's kind of funky. And this happens at any, from T1 to L2. So if we just choose, say, a sweat gland that's on the T5 dermatome level, and there's our preganglionic sympathetic neuro, uh, neuron. It goes in through the white ramus, synapses in the sympathetic chain, and then a postganglionic exits through the gray ramus and goes out to synapse in that sweat gland. The key to this is the postganglionic sympathetic neurotransmitter at that location is acetylcholine. This is very funky. Sweat glands are innervated by sympathetics, but they use acetylcholine as the postganglionic neurotransmitter. And that's the end of our sympathetic uh, tutorial.